Today we're going to be talking about why you, yes you, are underpaid as a programmer. I coach a lot of guys, okay, a lot of software developers, a lot of programmers, and one of the first things I do with a lot of my coaching clients, if they're making under six figures, is get them to a six-figure job, and we can usually do that in less than uh, three months. And uh, you know, in fact, I haven't really encountered anyone who I haven't been able to do this with. So stay tuned if that is interesting to you, because that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. I'm going to give you all my secrets, and, and they're they're not very secretive, uh, but they're going to be common sense uh, reasons why or ways that you can raise your salary and make a lot more money and there's no tricks involved here. If you guys are just joining me for the first time, I'm John from simpleprogrammer.com on this channel. I teach you guys how to become a better software developer, how to develop the soft skills, the career management skills that you need to really exceed other developers and to excel at life and to become a well-rounded person who uh, enjoys their life as well as uh, you know writing code and making money. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure you pick up a copy of my book, The Complete Software Developer Career Guide. Uh, this is like 800 pages and it is you know for all levels of developers. Okay, it's currently the number one best-selling book on Amazon in software development. It's got like over 500 five-star re reviews, uh, you know, for a reason. But go check it out for yourself and uh, let me know what you think. If you already bought the book, you know, give a, a like on this video and uh, a shout out down below and leave a comment. Let people know, uh, you know, if you found the book valuable. If you didn't find it valuable, leave a comment below too. You know, let me know what what uh, can be fixed in the next edition of the book. All right, so, so let's talk about this, all right? This is uh, something that, again, I encounter a lot, all right? I'll get emails from guys and they will tell me how they're a junior developer and they're making like $60,000 or $70,000 a year and they're hoping in a couple of years to increase that. And it, it's kind of funny because most of these guys that are emailing me, they could be making a lot more money. In fact, like I said, when I work with coaching clients, when I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, one of the first things that I go after that I consider low hanging fruit is getting you a six figure job, right? It's not that difficult to do. Now, if you're just starting out and you have no experience at all, you might think, well, hey, I can't get a six figure job, but that's actually not really correct, okay? Now, hear me out here. I'm not saying that you're gonna lie. I'm not saying that you're gonna cheat or anything like that. I'm just saying that if you actually know how to code and you can write an application, you can get a six figure job because believe me, there's a lot of developers and I've worked with them. Okay. I can tell you that are senior level developers that cannot actually code. They don't know how to code. They can fix a few bugs. Okay. They can talk some of the talk. They can pass some interviews, but they cannot sit down and actually write an application. If I told them right now, just create whatever framework, whatever programming language you want to use, create a simple to do list application. They could not do it. Okay, now, so if you can do that, and there are people that are making six figures that can't do that, then absolutely you can make six figures. Okay, so let's talk about why you're not making the money that you could be, and there's a couple of reasons. So the first reason is because you don't think that you deserve it, okay? It's sort of this, what we call imposter syndrome, all right? And again, like I said, even if you're just starting out, it doesn't matter. You can still have this mindset, whether you're five years experience, 10 years experience, or just starting out. But the reality of the situation is that you can get a job that's that's making good money, all right? And what's holding you back in many cases is that you just don't believe you're worth it. You believe that eventually you'll be worth that amount of money, but you need more experience, you know, you need uh, some more years, you need to learn this new programming language or technology or get better at it. But in most cases, that's simply not true. Now, do not get me wrong here, okay? I wanna be very, very clear on this, okay? If you don't know how to code, you can't just get a job making six figures, okay? If you're watching this video and you haven't learned how to program yet, that's great. Subscribe to the channel, watch some videos on the channel, pick up my book definitely, and learn how to code. But if you know how to code, you can absolutely get a six-figure job. You just don't believe it at this point. But again, I'm gonna tell you some of the other reasons why you don't have one right now, and, and hopefully it'll make it a little bit more clear. All right, so the, the next reason here, and, and this one's just a common sense one, but, but again, so many people don't realize this, is you just don't have a broad enough spectrum of your job search, okay? What, what do I mean by this? What I mean is this, okay? So let's suppose that you're looking for a, a job as a software developer, okay? And you apply for, let's say, 10 jobs, okay? And out of those 10 jobs, maybe you get, you know, let's say two or three interviews, and then you get one offer. Now, 
if you had like a, a bell curve distribution of salary ranges for, let's say, even whatever your experience is, even entry level software developer, right, or, or mid level, okay, it, it would it would look at it would look like this, right? You know, if you're familiar with the bell curve, but at the one end of the bell curve, you would have like salary ranges around, I don't know, like forty to sixty thousand dollars, right? And then you'd have most of them falling in the range of like seventy, eighty, ninety thousand. Let, let's say for your experience level if you're kind of on the on the newer side and then you'd have like it, it kind of sloped down and then on the extreme end you'd, you'd have some developers that don't have much experience at all but they're working for facebook or some major financial company and they're making like a hundred thousand a hundred fifty thousand maybe even up to two hundred thousand dollars okay so coming back to the example if you only applied for 10 jobs what's the probability that one of those jobs and the one that you got an offer from is going to be anywhere on that bell curve on any particular spot, right? This is going to be an 80% chance, let, let's say, that it's going to be somewhere in the middle part of the bell curve because that's where most of the distribution is, all right? And that's what most people settle for and that's what most people get because they don't understand that it's all a numbers game. So instead of applying for 10 jobs, okay, what if you apply for 100 jobs and you get 10 offers, Okay. Now, of those ten offers, what's what does the bell curve say? It's going to say that uh, that eighty percent of them are going to be in that normal range of let's say seventy to ninety thousand dollars. Okay, but two of them are going to be on on the somewhere outside of that, maybe on the super low end, but also maybe on the super high end. Okay. What if you apply for two hundred jobs, right? So th those numbers increase, and so. Really, the key, one of the reasons why you're probably not making as much money as you can is it's just because you haven't applied for enough jobs, you haven't actually gotten enough interviews, you haven't actually got enough offers, okay? If, if you basically applied for some jobs and you got one offer and you just accepted that offer, even if you negotiated that offer, the probability is that you're gonna lie within the meaty part of the bell curve, okay? And so one of the things that I really help developers do when we're doing the one-on-one -on -one coaching is I say, okay, hey, you know what? While you're looking for a job, it's kind of your full-time job, especially if you don't have a job right now, I want you to work eight hours a day on applying for jobs, right? No kidding. And and I don't mean just like spam applying for jobs. I mean like putting a very quality cover letter that's customized to that, that particular job, customize your resume for that particular job you're applying for. Maybe you spend an hour on each job application, you know, doing some research on the company and, and things like that. And, and maybe you only put in eight applications per day. Okay. But if you do that for like two weeks time period, all right, eight applications a day, all right, uh, let, let's say for 20 days, just to make the numbers simple. That would mean that you would put in 80 high quality job applications, all right? So the, the potential yield that you're gonna get from that is gonna be much, much greater than someone who only applied for 10 jobs and didn't do a very good job of it, all right? So just from a probability standpoint alone, you have to realize that that, that is probably the thing that is causing you to not have the higher salary that, that you could. So just that one tip alone, you're welcome. I just I just made you like 10 or 20 grand, okay? <laughs> if, you, if you just follow that, all right? Now, not, not everyone really wants to follow that because it's a lot of work, but if you're willing to do the work, uh, you're gonna get paid for it, all right? So that brings us to the, the third reason here, which is that you just don't know how to negotiate. You haven't negotiated well. And, uh, and, and part of that is possibly because you haven't done anything to put yourself in a good negotiating position, okay? So one of the things that I do sell here on Simple Programmer is uh, my How to Market Yourself as a Software Developer course. There'll be a link down below. Uh, we'll put one in the cards as well. And the reason why I created that course was because when I started out as a developer, I was really good. I had a lot of good technical skills. I wasn't getting paid as much as, as I should be, all right? But what I started to learn was that once I created my blog, okay, simpleprogrammer.com, if you haven't seen, it's been around for 10 years now. And I started creating, I eventually I created a podcast and eventually, you know, this YouTube channel and things like that. And I, I started appearing on podcasts. Like I, I purposely started building my personal brand. What I found was that my marketability increased a huge amount and that I would actually get offers that were coming to me rather than me going out and, and looking for jobs. And all of a sudden my salary raised a huge degree. In fact, my hourly rate went as high as like $350 an hour as a software developer with jobs coming to me okay now that was all because of of building a brand and, and, and marketing now you don't necessarily have to do that even just having a simple blog okay i've got a course on on how to create a blog it's a totally free course we'll put the link down below as well but you know just having that will give you a big advantage uh, and 
and, and the key here is that though when you do get a job okay you need to negotiate and you don't ever accept the first offer right you you have to have some of those good negotiating skills i think we've got a, a video on the channel as well uh, from josh duty talking about how to increase your salary and negotiate and i know i have at least a chapter or two in my book about this about negotiating both getting a job initially okay and going back and forth and uh, and getting a raise as well but the key is is that you you've got to be willing to walk away and you have to negotiate you have to not accept the first offer you have to come back and come up with a counter offer not name the first number first you know there's a lot of tips in that again you can find them in the book you can find them on this channel as well so i'm not going to go over that i just want to highlight the point is that you should be negotiating you should be negotiating your initial salary you should be ne negotiating raises in fact you know again one of the things that i do when i coach guys is i help them negotiate right and it's amazing how much more money you know i've, I've had guys that have gotten offers for like $120,000 and they're thrilled. They're like, shit, like I'm, I'm happy, John. I'll just take that offer. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. We're negotiating this. And then we've bumped them up to 140, $150,000 just by practicing good negotiating tactics. Now they were, they had some skills, right? And, and usually they had a blog in order to command that kind of salary. So they had some, some kind of proof that they were a good developer, but just by negotiating, you can, you can really raise your salary. So those are kind of the three that come to the top of my mind. There's probably some more reasons in there why you're not being paid as much as you could as a software developer. But, um, but yeah, uh, you know, make sure you click the subscribe button, click the like if, uh, if you like this video and, watch some more videos on the channel. I've got a lot of information about this. I've got a lot of information in the book. You know, this is important to actually work on the soft skill side of your software development career. Like to learn these skills are gonna make you a lot more money and a lot more successful than just learning technical skills. It's good to learn technical skills, no doubt about it, okay? I'm not, all, I'm not about in any way being a fraud, but you need to learn these other skills and uh, that's really what's gonna help you in your career. So go watch some videos.